What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming GPD Pocket 4, and this is one that I've been really excited about. I've kind of shied away from the Pocket series from GPD, mainly because a lot of the chipsets they used were a bit underpowered when you compare them to their other devices on the market. But this has all changed with the new Pocket 4, because what we've got here is the world's first 144Hz 8.8 inch modular full featured handheld AI PC. Definitely a mouthful, but this thing is powered by the all new AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX 370. So we can definitely expect some stellar performance out of this chipset, and GPD has found a way to allow us to go up to a 28 watt TDP in this without it thermal throttling. Actually, the cooling system they're using here is pretty nice, and by the end, we'll have an idea of what this thing can really do. This is more of a first look video. I do want to spend some more time with this, but we can definitely get some testing out of the way in this video. So we do have a lot to cover, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys, and I have been using this site for quite some time when it comes to buying Windows 10 and Windows 11 keys. Over on Microsoft's site right now, you can see Windows 11 Pro is $199, and if you're building a low-cost budget gaming PC, adding an extra $200 on top just isn't going to work out for a lot of people. But luckily, over at VIP URCD Keys, you can pick up Windows 11 Pro for as little as $21 using my code ETA. This will get you 30% off bringing that price down to only $21. And if you wanted to save just a little more and you don't mind going with Windows 10 Pro, you can get this for as low as $16 during their Black Friday sale using my code ETA. And this discount code does work for other products on their website like Swift Do PDF. You can go with Microsoft Office if you want to. But I personally needed another Windows 11 Pro key for a new build that I did. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $20.40 for a full Windows 11 Pro key. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. So yeah, if you're in need of cheap Windows 10 or Windows 11 keys, definitely check out VIP URCD keys during their Black Friday sale. And don't forget to use code ETA for 30% off. So with the new Pocket 4, GPD has added a lot to this device. Uh, we've got a really nice keyboard. Backlit, only a single zone white LED. Over on the right hand side, we've got a trackpad that works way better than I thought it would. I'm actually glad we don't have a nub. Three mouse buttons over on the left hand side, so if you are kind of holding this like a handheld, you can navigate the full operating system. Plus, we've got that touch screen, but it doesn't stop there because it rotates 180 degrees, and you can set this up in kind of a tablet mode if you ever needed to. Now personally, I've been using this quite a lot with the built-in touchpad and keyboard. It is a chiclet style QWERTY keyboard, and when it comes to this display, it's actually an 8.8 .8 inch up to 144 Hz. It's using LTPS technology up to 500 nits of brightness, and it's got a resolution of 2560 by 1600. So we do get that awesome 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It's also 97% DCI-P3. And when it comes to I.O., GPD has added a lot to the Pocket 4. Over on the left-hand side, we've got full-size HDMI and a USB 3.2 port, full-size, plus we've got our speaker over here. Moving over to the right-hand side, 3.5 millimeter audio jack and a full-size USB 2.0 port. Up front, we've got our power button slash fingerprint sensor so we can quickly and easily log into our operating system. Around back, there's a gigabit ethernet port, full function USB-C, plus we get USB 4, it does run at a 40 gig protocol. And this one did come with a micro SD card slot, but this section over here is pretty interesting, and they do call this a modular PC, mainly because we can swap this section out for an RS-232 module, a 4G LTE module, I've got the memory card slot in mine, and there's also a single port KVM module that you could add to this device. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, this is actually powered by the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370. It's based on Zen 5, 12 cores, 24 threads, and we've got a boost clock up to 5.1 gigahertz. This is one of my all-time favorite AMD mobile chips right now because it does have that Radeon 890M iGPU. And with this, we get 16 compute units. They're based on RDNA 3.5, and they'll clock up to 2900 megahertz. 
They will be offering this with a few different RAM configurations. You can go with 16, 32, or 64. I've got a 32 gig model here, but they all use LP DDR5X at 7,500 megahertz. It utilizes a 2280 M.2 SSD, and you can go up to two terabytes with this. We've got that 144 hertz, 8.8 inch LTPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600, 343 pixels per inch, 500 nits of brightness, 97% DCI-P3. It does have Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, plus remember we've got that Ethernet port around back, a 45 watt hour battery with 100 watt PD charging capabilities. You can charge this to 50% in 30 minutes, and they're claiming around 9 hours of video playback. I'm going to do some testing by the end here. It weighs 770 grams, and right now this is running Windows 11 but you could always install Linux on this machine. After all, it's an x86 platform. Now, I do love the form factor here, coming in super small. That way you can travel with this. You can carry it around basically anywhere. And while using this thing, I haven't had the urge to plug a mouse and keyboard in, which I usually do with laptops just to make it a bit easier. I think they did a great job with the ergonomics here, given how small this thing is. And performance is really great, given the form factor. I mean, we do have that Ryzen AI 9 HX370, which is one of the best mobile chips on the market in my opinion right now, especially if you're only going to go with iGPU performance. Because when it comes down to it, yeah, at the time of making this video, it is the most powerful iGPU on the market. And out of the box, this is running at a 28 watt TDP, but we can fully adjust it. So the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. Geekbench 6 coming in strong here on the single and multi, 2,895 single side, multi 13,513. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, 3D Mark Night Raid, 30,661, and I also ran Time Spy coming in with a 3,688. Now this was at the stock TDP of 28 watts, but with third party software, we can take this down. And of course, with a 45 watt hour battery, you're not gonna be running this full tilt all the time, especially while gaming. So what I'm gonna do now is take it down to 15 watts. I've got this plugged into my game capture first up and then we'll move over to the built-in screen. But here's Forza Horizon 5. Up in the top left-hand corner, we've got Afterburner, 15 watt TDP. 1080p, medium, no resolution scale we're seeing an average of around 87 FPS. This is some great performance, and even if we were to take this up to like 28 watts, we're not gonna see a huge jump in performance. I mean, yeah, it definitely does go up, but I think AMD has done a stellar job optimizing these chips for efficiency. The next one I wanted to show you here was a newer one on the list, God of War Ragnarok. Obviously, we've got the PC port here. We're still at a 15 watt TDP. This is running at 1080p, low, FSR set to balanced, and we are using FSR frame gen. Just something we kind of need to do with these lower wattages. But in my opinion, even on a larger screen, it looks great, but we've got a smaller 8.8 .8 inch display. It's kind of hard to tell the difference with that FSR on, you know, when you're playing a game on the built-in screen. But looking at the frame rate up there in Afterburner, we're in the high 70s at a 15 watt TDP. Also got that CPU temp on screen, and it's looking like across the board, you know, while gaming at a 15 watt TDP with these AAA games, we're seeing anywhere from 54 up to 57 degrees Celsius, which is nowhere near thermal throttle. And at these lower wattages, this thing does stay pretty quiet with the single fan cooling system that GPD has added. So far, I've been seeing some great performance out of this machine, but now I kind of want to swap over to the built-in screen just to kind of give you an idea how everything looks. I've got a few more games that I want to test out here. Checking out Black Myth Wu Kong, 1200p low with frame gen on. I did take this up from 15 watts to 18 watts just to get a little more out of it. And yeah, we're over 60 here. I mean, continuously plays very, very well on this machine here. Also wanted to throw at least one fighting game in, Street Fighter 6, 15 watt TDP, 1200p, medium. Going into this, I knew we wouldn't have trouble running it on this machine. Running at 60, got a couple dips every once in a while, but that's pretty much normal for an iGPU in this game.
Here's Doom Eternal, 1200p, medium, at a 15 watt TDP. And finally, we've got Overwatch 2 1200p medium settings, 18 watt TDP. Now I do think that this is my fault that I had to jack it up just a bit. Really, when it comes down to it, I was looking through the resolutions with this game and I couldn't find the 1200p 144. Basically, I could do 1200p 72 hertz. Not sure if it's something with the display driver, so we're basically locked up to 72 with this one right now. In my next video, I will test this one again if we can get that on up there. And the final thing I wanted to talk about in this video was battery life. Now this is early testing. I'm sure that GPD will have some more firmware out. But right now at a 15 watt TDP with let's say God of War, this is going to be worst case scenario. Looking like we're pulling a total of 26.6 watts from the battery. And let's say we moved over to something a bit easier. I've set this at a 10 watt TDP, but with Hades 2, we don't quite need 10 watts to run it. 13.6 watts in total from the battery while playing this game. I also ran a video loop test. And with all this information, we can kind of get an idea of what kind of battery life we're going to see out of this. With the Pocket 4, we've got a 45 watt hour battery. With my 1080 video loop test, this is local playback, around 8 hours and 27 minutes. So if you took the brightness down on that screen, you could probably stretch 9 hours out of this thing. 10 watt gaming, 3 hours and 18 minutes. And 15 watt gaming, we're looking at around 1 hour and 41 minutes. Not too bad, but as we go up with it, let's say 28 watts, that's really going to take that battery life down. We're working with a 45 watt hour battery, but given the form factor and everything we've got here, this isn't looking too bad, especially the chip we're using. And I mentioned that AMD really did a great job with efficiency on this new Ryzen AI HX370. So far, I've been having a great time with the GPD Pocket 4. They really made this for engineers, but if you're looking for a small form factor, great performing PC to kind of take with you when you travel, this is a great option. And they will have their Indiegogo going live soon. I'll leave a link in the description, but this was kind of just a first look at the Pocket 4. And yeah, I mean, I think they've done a pretty bang up job here. And I will have at least one more video coming up in the next few days. I definitely want to spend a little more time with this thing. So if there's anything else you want to see running on the GPD Pocket 4, let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind testing some more games here in Windows, or we could go ahead and wipe this SSD and install Linux. If you want to see Linux, let me know which distro down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'll leave links to GPD's website in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.